the Nostalgia Critic Guide, remember it, so you don't have to. Mulan. When it first came out, it was a critical and box office hit, but its following seems to have grown bigger and bigger with every passing year. Though I personally found the film okay, I'd be lying if I said I didn't see what drew so many people to it. Its songs are catchy, its comedy is decent, and its lead, though nothing new by movie standards, was kinda different in terms of animated Disney standards. Say what you will about their heroines, but chances are if you were the animated lead of a Disney movie, you probably weren't going to do much swordplay. Hell, one of the few times they did, you had to pretend to be a boy. Think about that. So yeah, while nothing groundbreaking, Mulan still manages to keep folks coming back. Even to the point where people are concerned Disney's gonna ruin their childhood classic with another live-action cash grab. Well, I have good news, my concerned fans. Disney ruined that property long before that version will ever come out. During the age where Disney would slap a popular name on low-quality shit as long as it made the money, ah, such different times, dozens of their animated movies were given the direct-to-DVD sequel treatment, and Mulan was one of those to be dragged in at sword point. Even as a person who had no extreme feelings for the original, I feel just as insulted as no doubt the majority of fans who saw this did. It's easily among the top five of the worst Disney DVD sequels. And if you know their lineup, that's no small feat. So, how does this movie punch your childhood so hard it'll make your ancestors bleed? Well, let's make a sap out of you to find out. This is Mulan 2. The film opens with George Takei speaking over puffs of smoke. So probably a normal evening at his house. You have ennobled the house of fire. Oh my, I am so baked. It turns out he's praising Mushu, voiced this time by Mark Mosley, as the ancestors hate glorifying him for helping Mulan save China. Mulan saves China one time, and now he thinks he's the emperor. It's like working with Shatner all over again. We then cut to the credits because this perfectly follows this. Woo! Top floor! Let the world pool begin. Tone is more than a shade of color. As we see Mulan, voiced again by Ming-Na Wen, teaching children about the importance of balance in both fighting and nature. Okay, so far not too bad, but do you notice a strange change in animation? Don't get me wrong, it's still Disney with nice colors and line work, and honestly compared to some of their other DVD sequels, this is a lot better. But everyone for some reason is animated like their comic relief. In the original, the funny characters move funny, but when the main characters need to move with purpose, strength, or elegance, they seem more solid so you can read the subtlety of their expressions and body language. Here, everybody is bouncy and over the top, like their acting coach was a wavy arm balloon at a car dealership. Just look at how Mulan laughs here. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I don't think she should babysit our kids. Like an oak, mm, you must stand firm. Ha, ha. Milan, why does your singing voice sound like Jasmine? Shut up, it sounds like Chun Li from Street Fighter. Damn it, you made me reference that movie! Shang approaches, played again by B.D. Wong, God, he has a knack for picking sequels, as he proposes to Milan, who excitedly agrees. <laughs> oh, what a happy, happy day! Wow, it's like instant annoyance! Just add Mushu and tears of sadness will follow. I'm just so happy for me. Are you crying again? No, I just got some exfoliating cream in my eye. Of course I'm crying, girl, what you think? You're like a bad Chinese buffet kids menu mascot. Passable on paper, a nightmare in every other realm. You know I'm the guy that gave you and Pretty Boy the hookup. Am I a guardian or am I a guardian? Or am I a white guy pretending to be a black guy? I thought John DiMaggio was the only one who could do that. <laughs> Back at the Ancestors Temple, it looks like Mulan and Shang getting married means Mushu will be out of a job, as the husband's ancestors will take over as the Guardians. I ain't going out like this! Hear me, you lazy lounge lizard! Again, something I tell Shatner a lot. A messenger from the Emperor arrives, though, to give Mulan a kind of plot. Mongol forces are moving closer. Our army is hopelessly outnumbered. Okay, after all this talk of romance and marriage and such, now we're gonna get to what Mulan fans really want to see. Fighting, swordplay, martial arts, explosions. Let's do this! Let me lead my forces in a preemptive strike. Each of my warriors will fight like ten Mongols. Let's get down to biz! No, General. Miss? Instead, we will become united with the kingdom of Qigong through marriage. 
we're doing Brave! Yeah, you remember that movie. You know, where they make it look like the main character is gonna kick ass, but it's actually about diplomacy and she rarely fights anyone. And when she does, she sucks. Congrats, Mulan fans! You got exactly what you were waiting for! Yeah, maybe the Disney Channel movies will give us something good. God! You will escort three princesses to Kigong. And yes, by the way, this is the plot. No fighting wars, no clever strategy, no everything that people liked Mulan for. They're just chaperoning three princesses for a marriage. My daughters know exactly what they're doing. It's like a Back to the Future sequel becoming a cooking show. Bizarrely, that's not what we're looking for. But Mulan is totally down for millions of people being slaughtered, as long as it means someone doesn't have to marry if they're not in love. They consider it an honor to marry in the cause of peace. I... Apology accepted. Wow, the Emperor is a dick! Apology accepted. Oh, and babe, get me a soda. Feminist! We must become one with the countryside. How many troops do you estimate you will need? Three. Three companies. Three men. So they decide to trust the fate of the Emperor's daughters with men so horny they literally sang the exact same song about banging from the first film. Wish hey, I had a girl worth fighting for. Something you got, there's a girl worth fighting for. It sounds like I'm paying you for the exact same song. Oh no, it's sung during a barroom brawl. Oh, that makes it completely different. Here's all the monies. I need you to join Mulan and me on a mission. To save China? Naturally. Who are we fighting? The injustice of the patriarchy. You don't want a Mulan 3, huh? By the way, see if you understand this scene introducing the Emperor's daughters. Were we a three-headed snake monster for a minute? No, it's Mulan 2. Nothing that cool would be in this. One of the women, though, drops her shoe. Because if this movie's not gonna be Mulan, why not be Cinderella? <laughs> this moment brought to you by Quentin Tarantino. No, wait. Now it's brought to you by Quentin Tarantino. Permit me to introduce Fa Mulan. It is a privilege to meet the hero of China. You might need these. It's a little chilly. Mulan! Bring her a blanket and savior of China! The journey begins and man, even the horses look pissed off to be in this movie. Hell with this shit, man. I was a cow in the first film. Let's hear some of that stellar directed DVD writing. I realize our duty is to the mission. But? But I have another duty to my heart. Ow! That line was so bad it physically assaulted me! But one of the princesses seems to have the hots for Chubby Popeye. Did you see the way he looked at me? The gorilla with the bad eye? He's more like a big, cuddly panda bear. He's such a handsome, ugly guy. You didn't even talk to him. A true romantic can tell. Ting Ting, I think she's in love! Aw, isn't that nice? Arranged marriages are bad, but confessing your love to a total stranger is fine. You're just nine years away. Nine years away. Fa Mulan? Your Highness, is anything wrong? Mm, let's change that line. There we go, not a single thing. I just wanted to compliment you. You were so brave to take your father's place in the army. You see, we replace all the action in this movie by reminding you there was action in the first one. How did you decide between duty and heart? I guess I learned that my duty is to my heart. My duty is to my heart. Man, you can tell they thought so highly of that line. They just had to repeat it over and over. I have another duty to my heart. How did you decide between duty and heart? My duty is to my heart. My duty is to my heart. Guys, I got it, I got it. Then Mulan says, not bad is good. Meanwhile, Mushu, wanting to keep his job as guardian, tries to sabotage Shang and Mulan's marriage by forcing them to split up. Just enough time to stop Mulan from making the biggest mistake of my, uh, I mean, uh, her life. Oh yeah, he's 100% the villain of this picture. Even Scar would be like, what a little psycho. Watch this. Up, oh, you tripped, marriage is off. Damn it, I forgot they were insane. Yeah, seriously, if my fiance did that, like, hey, we should both be near our horse's dicks. That's when I call off the wedding. 
This dude led an army against the Huns, and he's running away from a squirrel, a skunk, a porcupine, and a mouse? Even the cowardly lion would be like- Dude, seriously, grow a pair. All future Snide comments will be lion related. One of Mushu's antics sends the carrot spiraling out of control. Again, he adds so much to this movie. As everyone tries to save the princesses inside. Mulan! The rope! Ha! To know the first major near-death action sequence of this movie comes from the friggin' comic relief. I think this red dragon would be less dangerous. <laughs> Thank God they let us know the fruit was okay first. But just because he failed at killing our main leads doesn't mean he has to fail at killing their relationship. I bet he and Mulan are two nasty words away from an all-out feud. I have two nasty words for you. Original by this point, our leads were challenging society's gender roles and fighting cultural stereotypes. Here they bicker over directions. Yeah, that dumb shit! What is it with men and asking directions? What is it with women and maps? Oh, you're saying women can't read maps? I'm saying that women men will ask directions. Oh, 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 men are from Beijing, women are from Shanghai. And this movie is from the anus of hell! Mulan, arguer of directions and savior of China! <laughs> I better go. I've got the first watch. Don't worry, they've all been kidnapped. The Emperor is paying the ransom as we speak. The princesses, of course, find they have an attraction for each guard. In fact, one of them was even writing a runaway letter saying she had to follow her heart. I have come to realize that my duty is to my heart. Cute. Let me tell you about the hearts that'll be ripped out of people's chests if you don't continue this mission! Okay, so personally, I'm not down for arranged marriages. I know, that's not a big surprise. But in movies like Aladdin, Pocahontas, and so forth, that alone is the only stakes involved. This is literally the deaths of millions of people if they don't go through with it. I'm sorry, that's more important. If he had some sort of clever workaround, I would understand, but the movie's not presenting anything like that. Speaking of which, how long have you known this guy you're willing to let millions die for? If this wedding does not take place in three days... THREE DAYS?! You're gonna let tons of families get slaughtered for a guy you know for three days?! He's not even that great a guy! Remember this from the original? How about a girl who's got a brain? Who always speaks her mind? Nah. That could be you! You could be the silent mute slave who can't thoughts! It looks like all of them feel the same way now as they sing about how great it would be if they didn't have the responsibilities of being a princess. You know, for one of Disney's most marketable titles, there sure are a lot of songs about how it sucks to be one. <laughs> Guess he got his jerk-off fantasy for the night. Hey, where's that lizard demon we're supposed to find charming? Oh look, he's making it look like Mulan's calling Shang an idiot and, gasp, even mocking his bad breath. Except for that garlic breath. <gasps> Wait, that boy can peel paint. <gasps> Was Mushu hired by the Mongols? He's doing more damage right now than they are. I'll just let this scene speak for itself. Don't play coy. I saw you outside my tent. I haven't left my post. And I suppose you weren't gossiping about me with the princesses. This is the stupidest thing we've ever stupid. Why are you talking with your hand over your mouth? I wouldn't want to peel your paint. <laughs> What is that, a Chinese slur for something? I'm discovering so much. Saying peel your paint, calling someone Fredo, all sorts of stuff I didn't know were offensive. And in the great tradition of awkwardly paused Disney frames, here's another one to add to your collection. And next time, don't leave your post! Next time, don't leave your post! My god, it's like what Damien saw in the dream sequence from Exorcist! Except somehow this feels more evil! The guards invite the princesses to the nearby village without telling Mulan, so Mulan goes to find them without telling Shang. China is so dead. As you'd expect, they start to fall in love as Mulan finds them and they confess their feelings. Fa Mulan, it's love! 
<laughs> Mulan, totally a squeer when she's gonna let China die and savior of China. But Shang finds them and says, hey, remember people dying and shit? I'm so sorry to break up your little party. Ooh, this is gonna be good. You wore this guy on shirts, kids. <sighs> what an emotional powerhouse of animation. Squash a bug on your neck with your chin and then seesaw away like a toy bird that drinks water. You brought us Snow White. Shang and Mulan also decide to break up and after hearing them talk this way, maybe they should. The problem, Mulan, is you. Don't trust your heart. Sometimes I wonder if you even have one. <gasps> you two are so wrong for each other, Dr. Phil says you make a great couple. He was in Scary Movie 4. They continue the mission as Unfunny Trogdor looks over his smashing success. I see Pretty Boy isn't talking to you. And you're not talking to Pretty Boy. Well, you know you can always talk to me. I'd rather talk to Gurgi. Yeah, I said it! Mushu admits, though, that he sabotaged the whole thing, which suddenly makes Mulan think there's still hope for them. You should not. I was gonna lose you! And my pedestal! You mean you got between Shang and me so you could keep your job? Well, when you put it like that, and... Anyway, I sound like a terrible person! Oh, all those problems, they weren't us, they were you. <laughs> I've got to talk to Shang, tell him I love him. Yeah, but think about it. If an Eddie Murphy dragon can split you up, something that's obviously a work of fiction, what are you gonna do when real problems arise? But dear God, what is that? Real action in a Mulan movie? <gasps> Quick children, hide your heads, you're not ready! <laughs> no! yeah! God, they traveled with as few soldiers as possible. How'd the conversation go again? Three. Three companies. Three men. These are my children. We must become one with the countryside. That includes being beaten like salmon fighting off a bear. Why won't you brutes see I'm one with the countryside? <laughs> they come across a bridge as they prepare to meet Kali and whatever hell Mushu is going to. I'm sorry. Shang lets go so she can climb up as they go to the bottom and only find his sword. Oh my god, I'm Shang! What a twist! Oh, I'm just sad. Mulan's crying stops the rain as she decides to still continue the mission. Meanwhile, Aragorn's Uber driver finds Shang without a friggin' scratch on him! Yeah, I actually feel better after that fall, go me! As Mulan reaches Qigong and tells them everyone was killed. A marriage was promised! I will sanction no alliance! So, what's the plan again? I would be honored to wed a prince of Qigong. You? Ah, and the amount of land you don't own is? <coughs> shit, you don't own shit. What would this marriage do? His assistants tell the emperor though that she's a war hero, so this might be a good move. Far more dear than three mere princesses. How? It still won't unite anything. If General Patton married Queen Elizabeth, America doesn't suddenly have an alliance with England. Though God, I'd love to know what that alternate reality is like. Prince Jiki. The Emperor agrees to allow her to marry his son, and the other two sons disappear before they're even seen, as Mulan gets ready for her wedding. This is the climax, everybody. Yeah, remember the sword fight and fireworks and evil bad guy trying to slice people to pieces? The brave Mulan battling her armed adversaries is now a bride who doesn't want to marry someone she doesn't love. Yeah, we're an Owen Wilson comedy at this point. Wow, I would give up a thousand pedestals if I could stop this. I doubt even the golden dragon of unity could stop this now. Not even the bloody dragon of messy divorces can come to my aid. Yeah, remember all that shit I said about following your heart and refusing to marry someone you don't know? Moonwalk that shit back to Hypocriteville because I have a permanent residency there. But Shang stops the wedding just in time. Thank God the dude saved the day in this girl power flick. But the emperor isn't taking no for an answer. However, Mushu pretends to be the golden dragon of unity and tells the emperor to marry Shang and Mulan. <laughs> If Mushu could make that much fire, he could have Game of Thrones the enemy in one single night! And both of these would somehow still have shitty endings! Now I command you to proceed at once! Yes, your greatness! I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. Um, what about China? 
So this is the famous Mushu. Say what? I have no secrets for my husband. What about the Alliance? You never said anything about the Alliance. Literally the whole reason all of this is happening. Great golden dragon of unity. <laughs> so nothing's changed, you're still not united and you're gonna be invaded any second? Aren't there rules? Of course, right next to the rules about dressing up like a man and joining the army. By the way, you're still slated for execution, but aren't we all if the armies aren't joined? What about my pedicure? Let's get jamming on the toe jam, people! And I'm not even kidding! That's where it ends. The whole trip to save China talks of duty and honor and obligation, and from what they showed us, they completely doomed everybody. Well, I didn't remember how big they were making that threat? Our army is hopelessly outnumbered. If this wedding does not take place, the Alliance will crumble and the Mongols will destroy us. We just have to assume they're still outnumbered and everyone got slaughtered. In fact, the irony is in some countries this movie is called Mulan 2, The Final War. WHERE'S THE FINAL WAR?! Oh, I get it. It was after the movie ended and it was so devastating they just showed one second of China burning and quickly cut to the end credits. But at least Mulan and the princesses followed their hearts. I wouldn't follow this if it was serving fresh Mushu, which is very tempting at this point. Talk about finding new respect for the original. If I knew this is what we could have gotten in its place, I would have immediately called the first one a masterpiece. The characters in this range from dumb to horrid, the plot is insultingly nonsensical, the animation half the time is awkward, and it doesn't give Mulan fans anything they would be searching for. They don't even make her a princess. You always see her in the lineups and people love her there, but they always bring up that's not her title. Here, you could have done it! Have Shang figure out he's a prince or something and they get married. I don't know, it's less convoluted than what they gave us. And at least it would have served some purpose. As is, this is a horrible movie to show your kids, especially ones that watch the original. It's stupid, it's degrading, it's not fun to watch, it doesn't teach you creative thinking or how to get out of bad situations. It takes a million steps backwards. Come what may with the live action remake, I'm just gonna call it, there is no way it can possibly be worse than this. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow, dishonor on your whole family! Dishonor! But I have another duty, to my heart. Hey, Doug Walker here. So doing something a little different. Uh, usually whenever I do a convention, uh, we charge for prints and we charge for taking pictures, but the money from taking pictures goes to charity, whatever the charity of the week is. And I realized uh, we have this show called What You Can Do where we go to uh, charities in the area and we show how you can volunteer if you can't donate. And I realized I should have been, anytime I do a convention, I should be giving the money to these people because they're so kind to open up their doors and, and let us shoot the place and show the wonderful things that they do and it's just they gotta rework their schedules to do it and everything so uh, if you see a charity being repeated on here that's why uh, so what we're gonna do is that um, I'm gonna show you once again a charity we've uh, done recently called the Center for Enriched Living uh, from the what you can do video uh, it's a really fantastic place I mean the video will show you everything and uh, yeah we've done it before but it really deserves as much attention as possible so I'm sort of gonna be working back backwards here. Whenever I do a con, uh, I'm gonna do a shout out to a charity that we've already done a video on, but like I say, it kind of deserves even more attention. Uh, so with that said, here's the video from that. Check out it, uh, check it out, <laughs> I can talk, uh, if you can because it's a wonderful place and definitely donate or if you can volunteer, it's a fantastic place. Take a look. My name is Harriet Levy and I'm the CEO of the Center for Enriched Living. We're located in Riverwoods. We provide social enrichment programs to people all ages with developmental disabilities. As you can see, all the artwork on our walls is done by our members. We're really proud of it. It's showcased throughout our entire building. So Man, the, the colors on here are so nice. Like, look yeah. at that. Look at the color on that. We were established in 1968 uh, when things weren't that great for people any age with developmental disabilities. Oftentimes they were in institutions. There wasn't a lot of promise and hope for our families. Uh, in fact, we hear over and over again how families would hear upon the birth of their child, well, they'll never 
learn anything. They'll never grow. They'll never be able to do anything. You sh would be better off putting them in an institution. Well, we found that to be not true. From children, it grew to teens, to young adults, to adults, and now we serve all ages from, from youth. Uh, pretty much 12 years up to if someone's 100 they could come to the center. We asked our families and our members what is it that you want? What are, what are you looking for? And one mother said nobody's ever asked me that before. Wow. My child has always gotten the hand-me-down classroom with no windows in the back of the school in the basement of the school with torn carpeting and for you to ask and she was in tears when she responded to our, to our survey. People need to be valued, not undervalued. When you raise the bar on those expectations, people achieve to that level. Whether or not you have a disability, that's how it works. Chairs, um, or table heights, you'll see the cutouts underneath the counters. You'll see everything's kind of lowered as well, so there's access to the microwave, access to the oven indirect lighting and the soft floor so you'll you'll walk through you won't hear your footsteps things like that so it's it's kind of accessible oh, you're for right I yeah. didn't notice that it's accessible for a lot of different people we're, we're here to serve the community so we appreciate whatever you could do for us click on that link it's right there click on it yeah, <laughs> thank you so much Thanks, Doug. thank you so much